Becky, you're on. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Becky Garcia. I am part of the membership team uh, here with the NAFA Corpus Christi affiliate. We'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the International Women's uh, Month uh, with uh, NAFA Corpus Christi. Uh, we are so excited uh, for this great event and how many people are participating with us. Uh, there's over, like, we can see there's over 19 people. We had over 30 people sign up. Uh, so we know that there's people still going to be joining us here for lunch today. So we're really excited about this. We're excited about how many new members have been joining our group uh, over the last few months and watching our NAFA affiliate here in Corpus Christi grow. Uh, so it is really, really exciting time uh, and to see our membership here grow in NAFA Corpus Christi. Um, at this time, oh, so few housekeeping rules. Um, I know everybody's on mute, uh, so please stay muted. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please use the chat room or the question and answer down below. You can see them down below, and we will get to them. Uh, and we will have a question and answer session at the end of the session. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, but at this time, I'm going to ask Cassandra Gomez to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Please face whatever north is in your office or wherever the American flag is. Mine's actually straight out my window here. And we will start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Cassandra. Hello, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Cassandra, for joint, for uh, starting us off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, at this time, uh, we are gonna ask for everyone to take a few moments to stop and reflect on this past year uh, with a brief moment of silence uh, to honor those that are no longer with us due to this pandemic. Um, it has been a year, we you know we kind of talked about it a lot, um, and uh, we're gonna take a few, like I said, a, a brief moment of silence to honor those no longer with us and reflect on the fact that we're still continuing to conquer this unique moment in our history. So please take some time to bow your head. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask Michelle Guzman from our membership team to come up and visit with you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Good. I'm so glad y'all could join us today. Um, extremely excited to be here. Extremely excited to um, have our guest speaker today, which we will introduce later. Um, we have some good people joining us today, which we'll, we'll talk about later, but I really want to talk about NAFA at a local level. Okay, so what does NAFA do? So National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. And so here in Corpus Christi, we've really branched out even as far as the Rio Grande Valley area, um, looking at Victoria or, you know, uh, people in our surrounding areas that, you know, we can help and be a resource to. Uh, one of the things that as a membership team, we have an amazing membership team. We call it our secret sauce. So uh, we have an amazing team here. And our whole purpose is to be a resource to all insurance and financial professionals, not limited to that, even realtors, bankers, lenders. I mean, the list goes on and on. Anyone in our community to be a resource in all areas. Um, a lot of the things that we do here at a local level, such as today, um, you know, some of these webinars and presentations, not only that, we'd love to host free CE credits for people in our industry. So be on the lookout for those. We did one last year, had a great turnout, uh, networking and mixers, 
um, as well as providing industry knowledge. And I apologize, I just had a tech issue. Hopefully you can still hear me, okay? So, okay, perfect. So networking, mixers, all that great stuff, okay? So industry knowledge, providing people from all around our industry to be able to talk and educate any of our members as well as non-members. Uh, also providing mentorship opportunities, okay? So providing mentorship, maybe we have new people in our industry that would, would love a joint membership or um, mentorship where they can learn from people who have been in our industry 20, 30, 40 years. So, so that's also something that we've done at a local level to provide that level of um, support and help new people in our industry gain confidence. So that is something that we, we've done as well. So um, like I mentioned, we are dedicated to the growth of NAFA Corpus Christi and uh, South Texas in general. We're dedicated to the growth, not only professionally, but personally. So a lot of things that we do will help all the way around, not just in your business, but in your family life, your personal life or whatever that mean. I apologize for y'all seeing my picture. Like I said, I have tech issues, so I, I do apologize um we also take care at a at a uh, state level okay so we do have nafa texas and so with nafa texas we do have a guest speaker who's going to tell you a little bit more at a state level um what nafa what can do so i will let miss becky introduce our speaker for nafa texas thank you so much michelle Oh my goodness, I keep watching the numbers down at the bottom grow and it's like so exciting compared to when we had our Christmas party and it was just four of us sitting on the screen and there's 25 of us sitting in this group today. So that to me is just so exciting. I mean, uh, just especially to see us grow this way. So, uh, so powerful to see uh, where we've come from as the for Corpus Christi affiliate. Uh, and I'm so glad to say that as I introduce Danny O'Connell, who is the president of NAFA Texas, uh, because he's watched us grow uh, through this time. So, uh, Danny, I'm so proud to uh, get to share you, with you that this is what NAFA Corpus Christi affiliate is looking like. So you can talk to us a little bit more about NAFA Texas and how uh, we get to share this time with NAFA Texas. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Come to all right. Well, I, it's an honor, a privilege to be included in this event um, and everything that signifies. And, and you're right on. You've got such great leadership there locally. And I know I know Leo's done so much, and your board has done so much to really bring this group of people back together. Um, you know, with the reorganization of NAFA Texas, we're really here at the state level to support you more so than ever, and in years past. And, you know, we want you all in Corpus Christi to be out there and supporting your local community and getting engaged. And I love hearing you talk about, you know, engaging other practice areas because we know how important financial literacy is for everybody now. And, and most people don't get exposed to that when we think about our own stories. And that's a really big part about NAFA, Texas, trying to promote this financial literacy bill where that would be a required course in high schools where, where students get taught those things. And many times, you know, they don't have parents to teach that to them or they don't go to college or learn those things. And so many people go to trade schools, which are great opportunities, but they don't get that foundation or that background, um, you know, learning about loans and interest in life insurance and how to save and plan for their families and their retirement and their future. So NAFA Texas is here to support you in your programs. Uh, we'll be putting on events for you all uh, that will really enhance and add to the value that your local group there is doing really keep you up to date on um, the bills and the things that are going through Austin. As you know, our legislature meets every other year. Um, really here to promote diversity, love seeing Corpus Christi and all that you bring uh, across the spectrum to our organization. And of course, we encompass everybody. It, it doesn't matter if you're doing property casually, if you're doing life insurance, if you're doing health insurance. Our members and a NAFA member is somebody that really cares about their clients. I know that sounds kind of funny, but we're not just some huge corporation. We're out looking for and looking out for our clients and protecting them. We're, our membership is comprised of people who are active in their community, who are volunteering and engaged in other associations and, and out there really looking out for the best interests of our clients in the community. So thank you for my, my 
few seconds, I don't want to take away any more time and just appreciate everything that you all do. And we're very, very proud of what Corpus Christi has been accomplishing lately. So thank you. Thank you so much, Danny, for taking the time to join us. Uh, you were talking about all the uh, programming that NAFA Texas does. And while you did that, I just put our NAF, our Facebook link uh, there in the chat uh, for and all of our attendees to see. Please go uh, join our group. Uh, we do share uh, everything that NAFA Texas is offering uh, for programming on our page um, because they do offer a lot of programming for free and some at low cost, uh, which we can take full advantage of, especially for NAFA members. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to share that. We do try our hardest to make sure we're always constantly sharing. Go also like the, the NAFA Texas page because they've got all their programming on there also. And uh, so important to take advantage of these programs that are out there because uh, they do offer so much and we share everything on our pages. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that um, as, I, as uh, I'm about to present our local president of our affiliate of NAFA Corpus Christi, uh, Ms. Lel Ardendela. So Ms. Lel. All right, thanks Becky. And uh, good noon to everyone. You know, I am honored to introduce to you our 58th mayor of Corpus Christi. Our Lady Mayor is born and raised and studied in Corpus Christi. So she is a true Corpus Christian, a mother to one son and a wife to attorney Victor Guajardo. She used to be an insurance agent with Allstate for 15 long years until she entered into her political life. That's why she knew the challenges of a small business owner and she treasured her experiences there to apply to her mayoralty leadership. In 2016, she was elected councilwoman in, at large and in her re-election in 2018, she garnered the highest votes at any at large city council member. See that? So we have a woman there. At Corp as, as the Corpus Christi mayor, she advocates for our vets and senior citizens and led a program called Saving Our Homebound Program, which became a model program adopted by Governor Abbott to vaccinate homebound seniors. Lately, you can see the mayor all over the places in school and thanking volunteers doing the vaccination for, uh, for COVID. And uh, one personal uh, experience, I had a photograph sent by two doctor, Filipino doctors, Dr. Rigunan and Dr. Rafael, who volunteered at the West also school. And the caption is, look who is with us. It's Mayor Paulette who is thanking us to do this volunteer. So I appreciate that, Mayor Paulette. Lately, uh, oh no, not lately, I said that. Uh, she has also a soft spot in her heart where, for children that she founded the Connect Our Kids, uh, a citywide plan to bridge the digital divide in the city. He created a food bank to support residents during the pandemic. I can go on and on and on uh, with the mayor's uh, accolades here, but I'm sure we want to hear from her. We, we really thank her despite her hands full with her plans to make the Corpus Christi go, grow, and glow. My pleasure to call on Mayor Paulette Guajardo. Bravo! Mayor, you're on. Beth, do we have the mayor? 
I think the mayor's sound may not be working quite right. Maybe we oh. should check. We're having trouble hearing her. Um, I saw her. I saw her texting, and uh, I saw her photo too. Yeah, Tom probably is. So, so hold that, please for some. We are waiting for tech checks. While we are waiting for the mayor, maybe Michelle can okay, say something, and then when the mayor comes in, then we would, uh, you know, just to yeah, use yeah, that. yeah, of course. So. I apologize. I don't know why my, my video is still off. Um, but um, everybody who attends today out of the first 15 that registered. So as long as you attended, you do um, you do qualify to get a Jason's Deli gift card. We did promise lunch on us for the first 15 people who registered. So as long as those first 15 registered are on today, we will get in contact with you via email or phone to make sure that you receive that gift card. Okay. So I do have the gift cards ready to go. And then after this, we will um, just compare and make sure that those attended and we'll get you your gift card. So we just wanted to give a little token of appreciation for joining us today and just um, helping us make this a successful event. So thank you to everyone who was here. We'll get in touch with the winners. Okay. Thank you. Is the mayor on? Otherwise, I'm going to call Adriana to make a pitch on the uh, membership while we are waiting for a tech uh, what glitch from the mayor's uh, sound system. Go ahead, Adriana. Thank you so much, Lil. I am so excited to be here. I am part of the committee, the membership committee. But in this time, I would like to mention the new members, the new members to join this year. This is a new era for NIFA, Texas, NIFA in general. Thank you so much for David Snowgrass to join this year. Uh, Alvaro, uh, Carmen Alvaro. Carmen Alvaro. Adriana Contreras Hernandez and Irene Rubio. Thank you so much to become a member with the NIFA, Texas. We are so excited. We part of this amazing, amazing opportunity here in uh, the South Texas. Thank you. All right, I guess, uh, Beth, is the mayor okay? I am checking in with her, and I know she's moved to a different computer, it looks like, <laughs> a different yeah. account, and they're working on it. So um, I say, if do you want to try talking, mayor? Okay, until such time that, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know if Danny is still here. Oh, Danny. You can try calling in on one of those numbers as well, one of the, the numbers that was provided and do that. A lot of people have done that as well when they're having issues. Okay. So- uh, Let me see what I can provide for you. All right, I, I, I call on, on the spot Danny, who may want to <laughs> do a little pitch on, hey, what's in store for, for, for the members who you know, uh, don't know anything about uh, uh, a name. Sure. And because Danny is the person who, during that time, our Corpus Christi was hibernating. I attended a conference in, uh, I think, Fort Worth. And Danny was there pitching all this membership. And, you know, I was so encouraged. I was so enticed. I said, yeah, let me go back. Let me go back to Corpus and regroup. So this is the person who really has a, a, a kind of uh, a, an effect on, on the way we uh, progress now uh, in corpus. So Danny, can you tell those uh, people what's in store for them, NAFA joining the bandwagon? Yeah. Oh, can you hear the mayor now on the phone? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Can we, how are we going to do this? So you're going to okay. speak, I mean, you're essentially so using ugly. the phone. Oh, okay. Mayor, okay. you're on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my Lord. Okay. I'm She's so been on since 12. I've been on since 12, but I didn't know y'all couldn't see me. I, I feel like I should pick that up. Can y'all hear me well? You can? Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you. 
Okay. Okay. Hey, Becky. I know there's <laughs> Becky and Adriana. Okay. Okay. Great. Would you like me to start or or yes? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you for having me here today um, with the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Uh, I am Paulette Wajardo, the new mayor of Corpus Christi, and it is wonderful to be here with you for the lunch hour. I also want to recognize Lel Arendella, who asked me to join you today, so thank you so much for including me and for thinking of me. So Monday was International Women's Day. And the theme for this year was Choose to Challenge, which is very fitting, I think, for the meeting here today as well. As a former successful small business owner of an Allstate insurance agency for 15 years, uh, I hold a Series 6 and 63 financial license and had a wonderful experience as a small business um, back during those years. It's been seven years ago now since, uh, since I've owned the business, but it was absolutely wonderful. I learned firsthand uh, the challenges facing small business owners and how problem solving was vital to keeping my business thriving. I was also a woman in a male dominated industry. I was, this was back in 1998. Yeah, 1998. I was the fourth, only the fourth woman hired as an Allstate insurance agent in Corpus Christi and the surrounding areas. And I am the fourth woman to be the mayor of Corpus Christi the eighth largest city of Texas. Um, women remain largely underrepresented in leadership roles in the insurance, agency, insurance, agency, insurance industry. I believe that at a time when our labor market is tightening, insurers could improve their workforce by paying closer attention to their female ranks and the potential for women in leadership in the insurance industry. I'm a firm believer that when women and girls are empowered with opportunity, our communities thrive. An insur uh, in insurance, while research tells us that women outnumber men in entry-level uh, entry positions, their representation in the workforce is significantly smaller near the top of their organizational chart. This issue is not only one uh, of, a, of equality and fairness, but it becomes one that can impact a business's ability to keep and retain talent. However, there are fundamental building blocks that any woman or workplace can put into place to build support for women. And those would be to help women build a strong network of mentors, encourage women to take risks early and often. And we as women in the workplace must learn to communicate our value to the company. Now, I know that all of these ideas are easier said than done, but I want to encourage everyone to take the first step by securing or becoming a mentor. And I truly do believe that because, um, you know, back in 1998, uh, I was very lucky in my career to have my mentor, who is also still and still um, an Allstate insurance agent, Laura Harris. She was literally known nationally, probably still is, um, for the successful agencies that she, uh, that she, you know, she, she ran, right? She, she had a huge agency and still does. As a matter of fact, she, is, she purchased my agency seven years ago when I sold it. She purchased half of it. Um, but, but I can't express enough her mentorship to me back then, and I was 24 years old then, was priceless because she helped me, she guided me, and she was at uh oh, she was at the top. You know, she was literally at the top of of uh, the all state world, if you will. So, as your mayor, I also know that the unique challenges that present themselves that there are unique challenges that present themselves when you're a woman running for the highest office in the city. Less than two months ago, I became the full time mayor for Corpus Christi, and I work every day to serve the people of our city. I will provide a long term vision. Corpus Christi needs and the leadership necessary to manage a billion dollar budget. I know that residents input is essential to our success and I want everyone to know that I work for you. Before I decided to run for mayor, I was told it was not my time. And if I had listened to that, I would not be sitting here before you now. For me, it was about discernment and what I believe was God's plan for me and his will. I'm the only woman on city council, but also the mayor. 
I believe that sends a powerful message to women and girls that we can lead at the highest levels against all odds. Women bring a unique perspective to every situation because of the multiple roles that we play in our lives. And I hope that my role in city government will open more doors and provide the inspiration for others to follow their dreams. People are always at the center of my priorities as mayor. And that's why my priorities for the city focus on the items that make communities flourish, which are public health and safety, small businesses, uh, economic recovery, our streets, and focusing on helping people rebuild after the extreme winter storm. In the realm of public health, <clears throat> Our Save Our Seniors Homebound program was created out of a great need to help our homebound seniors in the community. Through collaboration with our Corpus Christi Fire Department, our SOS program brings COVID-19 vaccines to the doorstep of our seniors and homebound residents. This program is a critical lifeline that I knew we needed and was brought to fruition. The program has been so successful in Corpus Christi that Governor Greg Abbott has taken the program statewide. 1,100 National Guardsmen from across the state are using our model here from Corpus Christi to vaccinate homebound seniors. Governor Abbott is delivering vaccines to 34 counties to launch the statewide program. Some, and, and some of you may have seen him here you know, on the news when he came to visit. Some of our participating areas include Aransas Pass, uh, Bastrop, Dallas, Refugio, and Webb County. It is humbling to see our Corpus Christi program become a blueprint for Texas to follow, knowing that it will impact the lives of so many vulnerable homebound seniors for the better. So this, com this accomplishment is truly a gold star for our city, and I am so proud of the outstanding work of our firefighters and Chief Rocha, who have made this program so successful. We still have bold goals uh, for the program, and I anticipate expanding the program through new community partnerships so that we can ensure more vaccinations are given to our uh, elderly and homebound and senior citizens. Um, another priority of mine is small businesses. As a former small business owner, I'm committed to helping small businesses recoup from the toll the pandemic has taken on their livelihood. During my time as your councilwoman at large, the city unanimously approved using a $2 million of uncommitted type A funds to create a disaster loan program for small businesses in Corpus Christi. The city partnered with Lift Fund, which will distribute or which was distributed the loans. Um, these loans will uh, they just help provide up to $25,000 in funding to help small businesses within the uh, the city. Um, come out of some of the, the um, financial distress that they were in. Economic recovery packages such as this one will help usher our city out of a devastating economic downturn and into recovery. And that is always the focus after we experience something as we have a disaster. When I look at the potential for economic growth in our city, I see it across the board. Um, I see from, well, from the Bayfront to the South Side, our residents are creating small businesses. Large new companies are coming to our area, and we have $50 million in new industrial growth right now being invested in our area. Uh, generational family stores are passing the torch to the next generation. Our, eco our economic prosperity is tied to the success of our city, and as your mayor, I am committed to see all of us thrive. Our streets are also one of my top priorities. I know that mobility is a vital part of our economic growth. And under the leadership of our Public Works Director, Richard Martinez, the city is strategically tackling this, uh, the street maintenance to ensure that our roads are repaired and maintained. We are working towards solutions that provide relief for our roads and our drivers. Strategies like expanding street synchronization to lessen vehicle impact are moving forward. Uh, with these efforts, I am confident that our streets City Streets Maintenance is heading in the right direction. I am also honored to serve on the critical Metropolitan Planning Organization Board. As a board member, I am advocating to secure state and federal funds for our city's infrastructure development today and in the future. Up to 20, they have up to a 25-year plan that would include our city as long as you have a voice on that, on that board. 
Public safety is another one of my highest priorities. And when I joined the council, our police department had not grown in 20, over 20 years, despite a significant increase in our population. So Corpus Christi had the lowest number of police officers per population of all the major cities in Texas. To address this, I led the effort to hire more, poli more police officers and to hold the first ever city workshop on public safety. I have already held meetings with Chief Markle and the city manager, Peter Zanoni, to address how we will responsibly expand our police force to protect and serve our citizens. Recently, I had the great honor of attending the 79th Police Academy graduation. So some of you may or may, uh, may not know, but our city's cadets are required to volunteer in the community and learn how to problem solve to provide effective community-oriented policing. The goal is that our police officers uphold core values of the law enforcement profession and build upon the outstanding tradition of service to corp from the Corpus Christi Police Department. Another priority as your mayor has been aiding the city in recovery through the historic winter storm that we just experienced. Along with the rest of the state, we experienced temperatures that are normally unseen in this area. Uh, 126 years ago is the last time we saw those, those temperatures here in, in Corpus Christi. Uh, more than 4 million Texans were left in the cold without power, or 13.1 million people who had, were affected by it with no drinking water, pipes frozen and cracked, and major roads that were not drivable, stalling the distribution of critical supplies such as water. So we saw true human suffering. And I believe as a city, we learned a great deal about who we are as residents of Corpus Christi and how we must come together to protect one another and help each other. I saw the very best of the people of Corpus Christi sharing water, heat, food, and blankets. Our residents showed true humanity to one another. And I am so proud to be the mayor of a city with this kind of love for one another. And as part of the recovery, um, I'm activating the Mayor's Disaster Recovery Fund, and this is to raise money to assist residents who were impacted by the storm and need additional help on the road back to recovery. So I'm calling on all of our residents that are able to donate also to the Coastal Bend Food Bank. All of us should have a meal on the table every night, especially our friends and neighbors who, is, who experienced devastation at the hands of this storm and are working to rebuild. The amazing thing about our city is that I regularly get asked, how can I help? And I believe that the public input should be at the center of everything the city does. I want our residents to engage with our city government and help us guide the conversations and the outcomes that we want to see as a team together. I believe that women in this group can help me achieve my vision for the city through engaging with our city government and helping me make our gorgeous city thrive through the work that you do in the community every single day. We have a very rich history and tradition of service, and I am ushering in a new era of progress. It is our time to be the model for the state of Texas and for our country. We will continue to build on our progress, and we will see the next generation thrive because of the work that we put in today. I want to thank the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors for having me here today because it is my honor to be here as your mayor and, and, and giving me this opportunity. But also, it's very dear to me because I was in your field. Um, I was in your field and not initially. Initially with Allstate, um, it was your insurance licenses, but then very soon after that, it was a requirement that not only did you have to have your your life and health, but you have to you have to get your six and sixty three, which was not easy to get <laughs> and not cheap. Uh, and I still hold it today because it's very valuable to me. And I feel that those fifteen years that God gave me as a small business owner, and not only as a small business owner, but in your insurance field, that was the foundation of what I'm doing today. Because all of you deal with people's lives and on a very personal basis. And that was preparing me for what I'm doing today. I, I believe that. I didn't know that then, but I do believe that. And, and your services are extremely needed. People have to believe in them. And that's part of our job as financial advisors 
is to teach people how to care and know that it isn't just a service. It is something that is needed for, the, for our future, our children's futures, all the people you serve financially. So again, thank you very, very much for having me. I'm so proud and I'm so proud to be here before you as one of you and as a woman mayor and as the second Latina mayor. There are, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Paulette. Your hands are really full indeed. And you are not, to me, you are not only a mother to one, but you are a mother to about 326,000 <laughs> of the population of Corpus Christi now. And uh, as I always say, you are a woman of strength, but also a beautiful lady mayor inside and out. Thank you. Thank so, you. With this said, I uh, would like to open uh, the, the session into something like a question and answer for the mayor. I'd like to shoot the first question. I'm sure yeah, so, so yeah. I'll go ahead. So we do have a watch party going on, Miss Mayor, just so you know, the Girl oh. Scout group. So we do have a Girl Scouts troop. It is troop number 96026, so Brenda Crawley. She's a very close oh, friend. Yes, I know the troop. Yes, they're hosting a watch party right now. She sent me a picture of it. I'll make sure we get it to you. That way you can see. So how exciting is that? So one of the questions that she did send, and it dismissed, but I want to say the question was, is there going to be a day with the mayor? Yes. <laughs> yes, there will be. I'm, I'm turning this way because the phone's there and I know that's how y'all are hearing me. Yes, there will be. Yes. And hopefully very soon. We hope to have, um, you know, more nor normalcy sooner than later. So absolutely. I think that um, back to the mentorship, that's what that is. And I want to do as much of that as possible because I think it's very, very powerful. Very. And, and on that note, too, I want to congratulate Becky because I know she's the new chair elect of the Scouts group. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That's I, it just and, and, and also um, Brenda, I mean, those leadership roles are critical. Thank you for doing that. And probably if I may add mayor in your a day in the mayor, I guess there will be diversity of attendance. So you've got Latinas, you've got, uh, you know, all, and Filipinos too. I can yes. multiply Filipinos for you. <laughs> Absolutely. No, we, we're, we'll definitely do that and get the word out. Good. Are there any other questions that you want to uh, ask the mayor? I would like to ask a question. Okay. So, Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mayor. Uh, what is your day? Where you? What time you wake up? What is your daily basis? How it starts? Tell me. Okay. Thank you, Adriana. So my alarm clock goes off at six, and then I finally wake up at six fifteen, and um, I literally I get up. My dear husband, who I could not do, I could not do this job without. I couldn't do it without him. Um, he makes a pot of coffee every single um, every single morning, and which I really uh, appreciate so much because I don't have time otherwise. Um, the first thing I do after that is is go check on my son. So I have a 15 year old. I think Lel mentioned that, um, and of course he's asleep. Um, but, but I go just check on him and basically I kind of give him my goodbyes because usually I'm gone before you know he he's awake. Um, but I'm I'm usually in a meeting by eight. 8:30, um, and it's 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 a real balancing act right now because um, there's so much to do, and my day literally can be filled with um, meeting after meeting after meeting. And you've got to have that downtime to do the work. So recently, I started blocking out some some time in my schedule so that I can actually get the work done. But um, I, I go. I I know this is going to sound crazy, but. I like to work through my lunch. I just, I, I don't go to lunch that often <laughs> because I know I can get so much done here. Um, so it's really all day it's meetings and getting work done at the desk. And of course things are scheduled 
um, ribbon cutting, you know, things out in the city in the afternoons usually. Um, and so I go do that. I've got right now, my son is in baseball season. So I have all his games on my calendar. I did miss one this morning because they're on spring break. So I missed one this morning, but he's got another one today, this afternoon. So I figured, eh, I probably won't even know I wasn't there. <laughs> um, but I'll go until, I don't usually leave here, here recently until about 6.30 or 7. But for three weeks, like from, well, from January 12th until after the storm, um, I didn't leave here till like 9 or 10 at night. I mean, literally every day. And my family knows, you know, that we were under some circumstances, right, with everything that happened. But my husband and my son know, they knew that we, what we were getting into and that it was going to be sacrificial, right? So, so it was all okay. There was still a balance of being a mom and a wife. Um, but those days were very, very long, and um, and and I'm sure there will be more of you know that that long of days. Um, but but either way, they're just it's 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 constant. But see, I love I love moving fast. I love just just going and going and getting things done and checking the box. I, I mean, that's just that's just in me. So it's, I, I have very busy days all day long. I mean, my day my weeks go by so fast. And and what I noticed after I was mayor was I didn't know what day it was because a Friday was no different than a Tuesday or a Saturday was no different than a Wednesday. It was crazy. And I, I, I can't even believe I'm saying that, but it's the reality of this, you know, but I absolutely love it. You know, even with everything that's happened, um, it's unfortunate because people are suffering and still are, and we're going to, we're working towards that recovery, but I love I love what I do. It reminds me of my insurance days. Thank you very so good. much. Very good, very good. Now I can uh, feel that the mayor is very dynamic, action-oriented, as uh, we call it servant leadership, wherein you know she doesn't wear high-heeled shoes; she wears a sandal. So, <laughs> you know, she can she can she can be everywhere. But uh, I am also impressed with the attorney Victor because she's true to her, to his biblical truth that he brews, he brews the coffee. Yeah, he brews. Bible, he brews. <laughs> so it's a joke, yeah. uh, the man brews the coffee for women. So are there any other uh, questions that uh, you wanna have the mayor answered? We did have another question sent in. Um, asking about having more celebrations, um, you know, for women's success and women's celebrations other than just this month. So can we expect anything or can we maybe plan or, or think about maybe some options for that? That was a question that was sent in. Yes. And you know what I invite, I think it's always good. I don't think it's, you can never really have enough of anything. I mean, if, if, if it's, if it's something, if it's a good thing and I would encourage, um, I would encourage you to send me your thoughts on that. What, what, what can we do? Um, you know, what can we do um, to empower one another and to build upon um, some of the things that we've been talking about? Because that's what helps us. Um, so I would be, I, I'm happy to, absolutely. We, you know, I feel like we have a, I've been hired for two years to do this job and maybe more after that. I don't know, but today, you hired me for two years. So in these two years, I want to do everything I can do. And if part for the city, and if part of that, which it is, is let's, let's celebrate women a little bit more. Let's, let's empower one another and really build upon um, everything we can be to help us all in our lives, in our professional lives at home. I mean, it's hard. It is not easy balancing what you guys do, what I do, what do we all do and balancing whatever it is in life um, that you have going on. So I would welcome your ideas, but yes, I promise I will think of something of my own as well to incorporate into my plan for these next two years. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, are there uh, more thoughts? Uh, and get some wisdom from the mayor. No more from the chat? 
the chat we have um, for Mr. Eddie Garcia, I would like to congratulate the mayor for her initiative in running for office. She's a role model for young professional women. Oh, thank you. That means so much to me. Thank you, Eddie. And also we would like to uh, tell you that uh, one of the councilmen, uh, uh, Roland Barrera, is uh, really very active in NAFA. So okay. whenever, we, whenever we ask appointments uh, to the mayor during uh, what we call this uh, proclamation mm -hmm. day, Roland is always uh, on hand to help. Good. Mm -hmm. So any more questions from the mayor? I know that the mayor is so busy. I'll jump in. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of piggyback off that question Michelle just mentioned for, and just first of all, let me just say so <laughs> impressed um, to have someone that is, like you said, Latina, uh, celebrating and representing women. Uh, and then from our industry, I think that's so neat. So that's very, very cool. We're glad to have you. Uh, I would just add to that, maybe aside from, you know, events to celebrate women, also getting that financial literacy out there. You mm -hmm. first can know how important that is, and especially mm -hmm. during these times where it's so uncertain. I think that it would be a, such a good idea to um, you know, try and, and make sure that people know what their options are, know how important it is to make those decisions that can be hard, but uh, when it comes to their finances and protection for their families. So I think it'd be neat to also host, a lot of times we want, you know, uh, a great turnout, so it needs to be a celebration, but maybe sneak in the education. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. We should. It's an opportunity. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a bill right now that is going on. I think uh, maybe Donnie can. It's it's a financial literacy, and uh, oh. yeah, and it's about teaching uh, what high schoolers so that they would know how to balance their their checkbook or whatever. But it's yeah. about financial literacy. So maybe we can tap the NAFA uh, as volunteers to have this one, uh, you know, spread out through. Uh, as young as they are, as high school. Right, Danny? I think the bill is uh, moving forward and it's about, uh, about I don't know if it's about to be signed in the law. What, what do you think, Danny? Yeah, so it was proposed last session, Austin. It's another one that's been picked up and I can get you the names. I think Moody was one of the co-sponsors or picking it up and it's really designed to target uh, high school students and teach them financial literacy, including how to fill out a college application. What are these student loans that are out there that you can get? You know, what is what is life insurance? How does that work? How, you know, to prepare budget, plan, um, kind of introductory to some financial things that unfortunately, you know, too many students don't get in their home. You know, you talk about both working parents or having a single parent home, and they don't always have those people there to teach them those things. But I was fortunate that I that I was. But then, you know, if you go to college, many college students don't even get these courses, depending on what their majors are and what they're doing. And you look, as we talked about before, how many people go into trade schools and things and never get exposed to these things and don't really know how to prepare and how to help their future and save and, and protect their families. And so... That's something that as association, we're always out looking for consumers. And it's so great to hear you, Mayor, talk about your entrepreneurial background and being State Farm and, and all that and kind of walking in our shoes because State Farm members are great members of NASA. So all, thank you all, for all that you do. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think that's a good uh, segue that uh, I believe the mayor has some appointments too, but uh, we are about a couple of minutes on the hour, and uh, I would like to have Danny continue the one that uh, we left off because uh, we cannot hear the mayor. But uh, somehow, uh, let's have Danny as our uh, last one, and we thank from the bottom of our hearts, Mayor Paulette, a woman of strength that you grace the occasion for our uh, International Women's Celebration, though it's about two or three days away from March 8th. But um, we thought of you because you are an icon to Corpus Christi. Thank and, you. Uh, we can relate and, uh, you know, and, and, and very, very, uh, what you call this, uh, matching that you were once in the insurance business. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You can have other uh, mayors or what, but they're not insurance business. And now you are the lady mayor. So it's really, uh, it's a cream of the crop there. So thank you so much. And with this, I would call on Danny to just briefly tell us what is it in, in it for uh, uh, NAPA members. Yeah, so, you know, this year we had to do our day on the hill virtually, but we definitely get together every other year here in the state of Texas and go and meet with our elected officials in Austin and the Capitol. And so again, unfortunately, that was that was moved to a virtual event. Uh, we typically have in a usual year, um, a, a meeting, a conference in person that rotates throughout the state um, where we bring in speakers of all different types. For me, NAFA has always been whatever I needed where I was in my career. As a young agent, it was something that supported me and helped me understand how to build a practice, how to prospect, how to time management, how to network with other people, how to get sales ideas. And then as I moved throughout my career, it was things like this that Leo was able to put together of connecting with your elected officials and your mayor. That's incredible. Um, I was able, you know, we have our national day out in Washington, D.C., and I was able to get to know my representatives and actually work with the House subcommittee in DC and, and other people on crafting healthcare legislation and go to Austin from time to time when there's uh, panels and hearings about insurance related topics. And I know we have another one coming up here soon that we're going to have some members go testify on. Um, personally, I was able to go testify in front of a House subcommittee hearing about balanced billing that was enacted in the state of Texas to really protect consumers against getting balanced bills from hospitals and emergency rooms and things of that nature. So it really is where the rubber meets the road, um, giving you a voice, looking out for your clients, and, and really giving you an opportunity to make a difference in our industry and in your career and in the lives of those that you represent. Um, as we mentioned just briefly before, we put together some content and programming similar to this that NAFA Texas will sponsor for all of our affiliate members, but certainly Corpus Christi. Um, you know, we want to be a value add for you when it comes to building your membership and your programming. And then we also want to have a voice from Corpus as you have a lot of great young leadership and we want your voices to be heard in Austin within our organization as well and, and promote that. Um, so for me, I've been very fortunate that NAFA Texas and the, the association has been there at every turn of my career on what it was that I needed when I needed it. And I met just incredible human beings and individuals that I partner with and work with and people that care about their community. All right, thank you, Danny. But I would be remiss if I don't tell you that in Corpus Christi, when we resurrected the hibernating association, I have <laughs> to thank my secret sauce. What do I mean by secret sauce? These are the ladies, the men, in the, uh, what you can see from, from the video, I mean, from the screen. This is my secret sauce, why we really activated this one. And I cannot do it alone. Maybe the mayor has also a secret sauce or whatever. Uh, who are the, 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 the men and women behind the leadership? Because sometimes, you know, uh, leadership is just the one that handles the baton, but actually uh, on, the, uh, on the side, on the back, on the front, these are the people that really, really make you the best leader. So I get my strength from these women. And as I said, I'm not getting any younger. I might turn uh, on the baton to any one of these ladies in here and i will be very very sure that i am giving the the key of the nafa to a very uh you know a very good person because uh, uh she was uh, mentored and tutored in the nafa thing so with that said uh, are there any last uh, comment mayor or uh, anyone from the secret sauce mayor you have the last word Oh, I want to thank you all. Just thank you very, very much for having me. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I'm very welcome. I'm very happy to uh, join you in any way that I can help you, the organization, um, or that we partner, as uh, Cassandra mentioned, that we partner and we invoke the educational part of empowerment, women, and building one another. All right. With that said, uh... Becky, you still there?
Thank you very much, the MC and Danny. And of course, here. Thank you. And of course, our very own uh, staff in Napa, Texas, Beth, you are the best. So thank you so much. This